Murderers might not be evil. Is that the lesson learned from Stanley Milgram's 1961 study of obedience? Why did 65% of Milgram's participants murder their learner by submitting them to a 450 volt electric shock? People are socially conditioned to obey. Milgram had already worked closely with Solomon Ash on studies of social conformity. Ash found that even when a person knows a piece of information to be wrong, he will submit to the greater knowledge of a majority opinion. Further research showed that minority influence can be just as powerful, especially when the minority is perceived as being knowledgeable, which leads us to direct obedience. Milgram's participants were likely to do as they were told, because they would have been aware of Yale's impressive academic reputation and the serious lab coat wearing scientists conformed to their preconceived notions of an intelligent scientist. Participants trusted the greater knowledge of their authority figure. Scientific study aims to progress knowledge and add value to the world. If the participants refuse to continue the experiment, they will be standing in the way of scientific progress. This commitment to the field or values of science may have led participants to unquestioningly follow the experimenter's demands. The participants were paid $4.50 or $35 in today's money for taking part in the study. This financial payment may have resulted in a feeling of obligation towards the experimenter. They were not operating on their own free will but as an agent of the experimenter who was paying for their time. Milgram called this act of obedience to another's authority an agentic state. Before the participants even turned up at the Yale laboratory and received financial payment, they all independently decided to volunteer to take part in the study by responding to a newspaper advert. This sampling technique is called opportunity sampling. The benefit of opportunity sampling is that it's a low effort method. Only the people who want to take part contact you. It's ideal for researchers with a fear of rejection, but on the downside, you're going to attract a certain type of participant whose results might not be generalizable to the wider population. This is called ecological validity. And in the case that a science-loving, Yale-yearning volunteer participant finds himself questioning his actions in a study, he may experience cognitive dissonance, a feeling of distress as a result of two personally held convictions which presently clash. As a result of this, Festinger suggests a person can A, change their attitude, B, change their behavior, or C, create a new middle ground. In the Milgram experiment, perhaps the 14 participants who refused to press the XXX button made their refusal in order to reduce or remove the distress caused by cognitive dissonance. Milgram's study was so controversial and ethically dubious, he sent participants away knowing that they were able and willing to murder someone, that Milgram was suspended from the American Psychological Association for a whole year. In 1963, Harvard denied him tenure as a result of the ethical limitations of his study, so Milgram finished his career at the City University of New York with many more fascinating, but ethically more palatable, social psychology studies. Do you think Milgram was right to conduct this experiment despite ethical concerns in order to further the knowledge in the field of social influence and obedience? Or do you think that the APA were correct in suspending him for his methods? Comment with your thoughts below and remember to subscribe to receive the next video.